So we, we all think you look like Tara Reid. Well, you know, I I would almost say thank you, but that's not much of a compliment, you guys. I don't know if that's. Have you guys seen <laughs> Tara Reid recently? <laughs> She's a fucking wreck, so I don't know if you guys are insulting me or complimenting me. It depends on what age you're talking of Tara Reid. Like, when she was young and looking pretty good back in the day, or if you're talking recent. Because that could be a very insulting thing or a compliment. It could go either way. Anyways, I'm saying, no, but she's, she's pretty messed up. So, uh, unfortunately, most of these artists and actors and celebrities are bulimic. And Tara Reid is one of those. And you know for sure the ones that are bulimic that have the really hoarse voice. That's a dead giveaway. But then you just you don't necessarily get a hoarse voice from being bulimic. So you say, oh, so-and-so doesn't have a hoarse voice. So they, No, you cannot get a hoarse voice as well. The way you get a hoarse voice is by uh, just... Some people, um, it's just the, the perfect combination. Like, I got my horse voice. Uh, I remember it was the day it happened. Um, I was partying too hard one night, and I was uh, bulimic and drinking and doing coke all at the same time. And I woke up one morning, and I just did, I lost my voice. Like, I couldn't speak at all that day. And this was in, um, I want to say, 2010 or 11. Probably 2011. I woke up and I couldn't, I couldn't speak. So I called in sick to work because I was working at that time at a, a condo building, and uh, because I couldn't speak. And then um, it, it came back a little bit, but not really. And so for the next uh, however many years, I could. Uh, my voice was so hoarse, people could barely hear me. And um, that doesn't happen to everyone, but. Definitely when you hear a girl with a hoarse voice, she's bulimic. There's no other excuse unless she has laryngitis. I mean, unless she's sick. Like, right then, but if she's continually hoarse voice, she's bulimic. There's just really no... It's a, Because it's damage to your vocal... Unless she damaged her vocal cords. But I mean, if the people sit there, oh, nothing's wrong with my voice, it's just hoarse. It's not true. Your voice is not just hoarse. Unless you're a big smoker. Maybe that, but I mean, if they're saying, oh, I was just born with this hoarse voice, because I used to say that to people, it's absolutely not true. It's from damage. Or anytime your voice is hoarse, it's from damage. So it can be damaged from smoking, if you smoke cigarettes, but generally it's damaged from bulimia is the most common thing we're seeing now. A lot of singers experience that, and that's why they start to lose their voice as they get older. The longer they do their bulimia. So, like, for example, Elton John just came out with a new movie, and he admitted he was bulimic. All these people go, how could you be bulimic and be a singer? You can, but generally, if they continue the bulimia, like I said, in that perfect storm where all of it happens at the same time, they might lose their voice. And that's what we see a lot of singers, their voice does get worse. I know Mariah Carey's bulimic, um, Justin Bieber's bulimic, and Hailey Bieber, um, Ariana Grande's bulimic. Demi Lovato actually admitted she was bulimic, but now she's no longer bulimic. That's why she's heavier. If you see someone that ever said they were bulimic, and if they're still thin, and unless they're saying what I'm saying, where uh, I completely changed my lifestyle and my diet, if they are still continuing the path they were doing then they're still bulimic because you can't just stop and continue to eat the things you were eating it's just that's not possible for one thing your body will um, react very strongly you'll get um, insane bloating because you'll you have candida overgrowth which is one of the issues you get from bulimia and from excessive sugar this happens from excessive sugar too and antibiotics so people that are um, obese have the same issues as bulimics because uh, it's all from the sugar. You're all consuming tons of sugar. The only thing is bulimics are throwing up, but bulimics are still getting the sugar because sugar goes right into your system like it's instant. Um, and even if you throw it up, you still got a lot of sugar, so you're still just that constant sugar addiction is what bulimics and um, obese people struggle with the same thing. So it's a sugar addiction. And caffeine usually. Caffeine is sugar addiction. But yeah, a lot of these artists, uh, Ivanka Trump, is definitely bulimic. I don't know if you guys have heard her, heard her voice recently. The woman cannot speak, and they act like nothing is wrong with that. No, it's bulimia. Um, 
And the reason why I bring up bulimia so much is because it's becoming a huge epidemic in our society and we act like it's not. So we either have these two things. We either have an issue where people are just gaining more and more weight and uh, not throwing up. So you have obesity because they're eat, overeating. Or you have people overeating and throwing up or doing other means like some people overexercise. That's also another form of an eating disorder. Because anytime that you're over consuming, even if it's by exercising, you might think, oh, that's healthy. I'm, no, but you're over consuming. So all of those things are an issue in your body will you'll eventually gain weight. That's why you see people at the gym plateau. Like, oh, I can't figure out. You know what I'm saying? Well, because you're still doing something your body doesn't like. You're still over consuming and you're probably still eating unhealthy stuff and then you're just compensating by working out. But your body doesn't like that. Your body wants you to be healthy. And people don't want it. I know people, oh, healthy. Oh, oh. You know, they have these visions of healthy. I, I did too. I was, if anyone knew me from the past, I was one of the people that would do everything unhealthy and nothing healthy. Like if it was a healthy option, I'd be like, uh-uh. If it was unhealthy, sign me up. I mean, any kind of drug or pill or bad food or sugar or alcohol, I was like, yep. Yep, yep. Oh, something healthy? Nah. <laughs> I'll, I'll skip on that. Nah, that looks too healthy. Nah. You know, um, fortunately, I never smoked cigarettes, which I know my voice sounds like I did. Um, I smoke weed, but I, I never smoked cigarettes. See, people think that uh, weed, the smoking of weed is the same as the smoking of cigarettes, like in the sense of uh, the harmfulness. Absolutely not. Smoking of weed is very good for you. If anything, it opens up all the capillaries in your lungs, and you get, um, so it's healing, because weed is medicinal so it gets in there and heals whereas cigarettes have all of these extra additives that are very very bad for us and that's why cigarettes in particular are not good to smoke but people confuse they think it's the smoking of things it's the smoking of certain things that are going to cause you issues but for me they go, oh, you're, you'll hear me coughing after the bunk. that's actually healing me because I did so many years of damage so uh, you say, how do you know these artists are bulimic? <laughs> well, for one thing, any um, model or actor or anything, they, they want to be thin, right? You know, like if that's their job, right? They want to look good. They want to be thin, right? Well, so they're always going to care about their body. So they're going to be paying attention to what they eat, you know, and be, um, you know, trying to eat healthy and exercise, right? You know, I mean, that's what, if you're going to be on TV of any sort. Well, when you see them eating things that no model would be able to digest and uh, be their size is one of the big things. And you can see a lot of these artists... Um, you know, just if, if you see them eating, eating any kind of sugary things or all the caffeine and Starbucks and Frappuccinos and and just all like, and they're still thin, then they're definitely throwing up. That's one thing. The other thing is uh, the voices. Like if anyone's voices start to go away, and a lot of the singers have, you can watch their voices throughout the years degrade. I watched an interesting YouTube thing where someone who knew how to hear the different... Uh, vocal ranges I personally don't know those but they were um, showing the difference I could hear it but I didn't know they were saying the uh, what they all mean I don't I don't I never studied music so I don't know the terms um, but they were saying you know oh she's in D or F or you know the, the letters and they were showing that m many of the artists' voices have gotten worse and worse over the years. Um, from all of them, Miley, Demi, uh, um, uh, uh, what's her name, Mariah Carey. They were showing all of them um, throughout the years. They their voices get worse. And it was showing a bunch of artists, and there was uh, there, there's a bunch of things. I mean, it wasn't just you. When you can look up and learn about the artists that whose, whose voices have actually degraded since they've been singing, and they played when they were younger, and um, how throughout the years, and now a lot of them just kind of skip the notes. That's what they'll do. They won't even sing their own songs anymore. They'll just when it comes to a high note, they just like skip over that. They'll sing the easy parts, but when it comes to high notes, and then they'll stick the microphone to the audience if they're doing a live show or they'll just kind of jump over it or they'll kind of make it an easier like the, the, they called it um, he was showing how they trick it so what, we see that more and more very few artists are belting it out like we did back in the day and that's primarily because most of them um, 
have eating disorders of some level, um, whether it be bulimia or over exercising or all these things that are like, like I said, you can, they're still hard on your body, even if you're going to the gym, but you're you're over you're eating bad things, like you're eating super sugary foods, and then you go to the gym to compensate. Still not good for your body, and all those things will have an effect on your voice, even if you're not throwing up, because bad food will affect everything, and especially things like dairy. Dairy are really bad for your sinuses and your throat, um, and uh, they cause like actual like just congestion of because you don't digest well. So like um, you'll notice if you stop dairy, all of Everything here starts to clear up. You're like, whoa, you didn't realize how much dairy affected sinuses. People don't know that. And especially digestive issues, like all of your gastrointestinal issues, almost all of them can be solved if you cut out dairy. Um, which that's why vegans are onto that. So that's where a lot of people think the vegan diet is so good because they experience when they cut out the dairy how good that feels. But the problem with the vegan diet is it's so high in sugar still because all of those artificial options are not as um, good for you as regular meat. I've talked about this before. The best, the best, the best, the best thing you could ever consume is animal meat. Unfortunately, for the people you know where, that we say, oh, we don't want to eat animals. But you should want to eat animals because animals, for one thing, give you knowledge and they want to give that to you. They actually do, because it, here's the thing. No, no one wants an animal to be treated unfairly or cruel, and we have that right now in, in some of these things when you do the conventional food. I choose organics because they treat animals fairly, and it's actually what you want to consume. That's why I'm thin is because I eat all organics, but organics I choose cruelty-free, cage-free, pasture-raised, grass-fed, um, no hormones, no steroids, no antibiotics, all these things, um, no pesticides. So... GMO free. All these things are not only beneficial for you, but beneficial for the animals, and they're treated well. That can make you feel better. Whole Foods has great uh, steps. You can choose, I think they're up to five steps, and step five would be the highest level of uh, treatment for the animals. So you could choose that when you choose your packaging. Um, other stores have different things where you can look. That can make you feel better about eating animals. But at the end of the day, eating animals is what you need to actually be the ideal weight that you want. You say, oh, well, I don't eat animals, and I, are you happy with your weight? Are you exactly happy with your weight? Like you, you kosher eating on cold kosher foods? Kosher? Is it kosher food that you're eating? Um, I, well, I would say what I'm eating is kosher, but I'm not eating kosher food. Does that make sense? I'm not uh, Jewish, and I'm not choosing to eat kosher food, but I would say what I do eat would be considered kosher, if that makes sense. I bet you the uh, rabbis would approve what I'm eating. What I eat is um, all organics. Uh gluten-free, dairy-free, GMO-free, artificial anything-free, um, basically no sugar. Only sugar comes from leafy greens and garlic. Um, no caffeine and no alcohol. Those are the two that people really don't like. Um, and that Kosher, kosher just means it's clean raised and clean butchered. Yeah, so basically, that's what I'm saying. So basically, I'm eating kosher, but I don't try to eat kosher, if that makes sense. Uh, what I try to eat is organics. Uh, well, not try. What I eat is organics. There's no try on this one. We do not make any exception. We will not eat before we will make an exception on organics. We just don't eat. If there's no options, uh, I even... Um, I had to be in jail for 30 hours, and I hadn't eaten 18 prior to that, 18 hours prior to that, because I, I was doing some stupid thing. I'll tell you guys about it in a second. And um, I just didn't eat. <laughs> I'm like, I'm not eating anything here. It's not organic. Forget that. And I, that, I guess if I had had to stay for a week, maybe I would have had to consider, but I would have gone at least three days before I would have eaten anything in jail. Mm -mm. Luckily, they let me out in 30 hours. So, so I went to jail for my job. Um, so in Vegas, it's a scam. There's escort agencies, but you can actually get uh, arrested. Working for an escort agency, you can they can give you a job, be a legal escort agency, and then you well, go the to scam. see a client, and the cops arrest you. That's the biggest. That's the biggest government scam in Vegas. Mm -hmm. That the sheriff works with the escort agencies. Mm -hmm. 
So they allow escort agencies. You can work legally, be a legal escort, business, work for the business. agency business. You can pay your taxes, everywhere, advertise everywhere. Long. And then when they send you to a call, they can send you right to a cop. They, and get not arrested. the business. Not the business doesn't get in but trouble. But the business doesn't get in trouble, just the girl. Just the girl gets in trouble. And you go to jail. Um, and I went to jail. Uh, this was in uh, 2018, two years ago. Two years ago now, I went for 30 hours, um, and then get, and then we learned a lot about the messed up system here. I mean, it is bad all the way. It's a joke. All the way to the judge. And then I had to go to court five the times. The, ju- the judge. The judge is a drunk. She the was a drunk. Are a joke. She was a drunk. I mean, they, they're more wasted than the criminals. It was ridiculous. She was. She didn't even show up on time, and she was wasted. Ridiculous here. Um, but anyways, I had to go five times because they're such a mess. <laughs> Five times to court to find out that all I needed to do was an online class and pay money. And they made me go five times to court to find that out. And my lawyer was a joke. He was so misheveled. He's drunk, too. Couldn't believe it. And these were, like, recommended when we went. When I got out of court, they recommend you to go see this lawyer and everything, you know. It's such a scam. And their guy, he's a joke. It was a joke. My gosh. And we spent $3,000. That nonsense and a joke. Anyways, so yeah, so I went to jail and um, oh, this is funny. So I hadn't totally figured out our diet then, so we were trying to do other things. And at this point, I guess I think it was 2018. Yeah, 2018. Joe Rogan had recommended this ridiculous diet that you wait 18 hours in between eating, and then um, and then you can like binge. It's a terrible idea. Don't do that. Don't starve yourself and then binge. That's a terrible idea. That is basically bulimia, whether you throw up or not. It's still the same, at like, it's the same habit. That's what bulimics do: is starve themselves and binge and throw up. Well, you might not be throwing up, but you're still doing the same behavior. It's not a good thing. So, anyways, I thought it was. So I tried out that diet. So I hadn't eaten 18 hours prior. I was going to eat right after work, and then I get arrested. And then I go to jail for 30 hours, and I refused to eat anything in jail because I was like, I, I, we were still, we were on organics at that point. I just hadn't figured out uh, that we were doing caffeine back then. I think I hadn't cut out the caffeine yet, but we cut it out that year. So our diet wasn't really. Um, I was still not happy with my weight, so I was trying other things like organics with Joe Rogan's thing, and the coffee was the thing I finally had to cut out. But anyway, so um, so 18 hours and then 30 hours. Like, oh. I was so hungry. <laughs> so I finally got out of jail. But I would not eat their stuff. So it's no joke, you guys. When you switch to organics, you got to go into it if you want to be serious about it. People want to dabble. They want to think organics are just like a, let me just do that when I want to be healthy. It's like, no, if you want to be healthy, you have to do organics. It's not, let me have an organic treat. It's not like that. But anyways, if you can't afford organics, the best option to do would be animal meat so if you're looking for what to go go get some beef beef is what i recommend if you don't like beef i don't really like the chicken but if you want to go for chicken that'd be a better option than probably what you're eating but um my personal favorite is beef organic beef but um for you guys if you don't want to get organic get conventional beef and eat a lot of meat they grind it themselves man yeah, no, meat is the key. People keep wanting to do this vegan thing. See, here's the, oh, here's the thing I was going to say about the sleds. All of them are saying that they're vegans and vegetarians. Primarily vegan is the biggest thing. It's funny, vegetarian kind of went out the window as it wasn't as popular to be a vegetarian. It was more popular to be vegan. <laughs> Whatever. Um, I was vegan for 12 years when I was young. I did it way before all, all these turds. I started in 1995. Um and no one was doing vegan. I had to read about it in a book, and I had to make my own vegan options. Like, I was making things like falafel and stuff. Um, and now it's, like, so easy to be vegan. Everything's vegan. Everything's vegan now. I'm like, geez, on all of our animal, or all of our animal, on all of our animal products, <laughs> that would be the opposite. On all of our beauty products, they say vegan because people don't want to use animal products now for beauty and stuff. But whatever. What's ridiculous is animals want us to use their stuff like because they are like hey 
and the next life they is better for them than this life. And instead, the vegans are all about saving the animals when they're like, we want to go on in the next life. Thank you very much. Thank you, Roxanne Lavin, for fucking saving us. We wanted to go to the next life. Thank you for letting us graze the earth for the rest of our life. So Roxanne Lavin is a vegan. Um, do you guys know TJ Lavin? He's here in Las Vegas. He is a famous BMXer and um, uh, uh, a host for the challenge there on MTV. And we have a little bit of uh, a little bit of a relationship with him in the sense of like we've interacted a bit on social media and we've actually met him in person. They, they said they thought you were in your twenties. To what? Ninety-five. They said they thought you were in your twenties. Oh well, thank you. I'm thirty-five. For anyone, so I'm thirty-five. So I'm trying to give you guys advice. For in my twenties, I was bulimic. Now I'm thirty-five and trying to help people that are struggling with their weight and stuff because I, I struggled with um, I never was happy with my weight until now um, but anyway so TJ Lavin he's a local celeb we've we've actually met him in person at, we ran into him at Whole Foods and stuff and uh, we had interacted a bunch on social media with him but him and his wife are huge um Gosh, ambassadors for vegan, whatever you know, they're like gung ho vegan, and and they really shun people that aren't vegans. Like if you eat meat, they shun you. And she, T.J. Lavin's wife, blocked me on Instagram just because I eat meat. I, I believe. I mean, there was and no then she other. Lied about it. And then she lied about it. Like because we were interacting with um, T.J. He was harding our stuff on Instagram this couple years back, and. Um, she blocked me one day, and I was like, well, that's weird. I don't know why she blocked me. I never even talked to her, and I didn't even know she knew who I was because we had been interacting with her husband, uh, and he'd been, like, hard enough stuff commenting back to us, and, you know, we'd been having, like, a you know, social media relationship where you, you get to know people on social media, and then we ran into him. So she blocks me, and I'm like, and uh, then she lied and said she didn't block me. But it's all because one day I had this shirt on that said um, I was – bacon before it was cool and it had a pig and that offended her so much that she blocked me she blocked me could not stand it just because i eat meat i'm like what are are we doing now this is ridiculous that vegans i mean it's becoming a cult you can't be uh, blocking people because they eat meat and then she says how could anyone ever tell someone to eat meat how could you ever do that I don't know because it's the healthy, healthiest option in the whole universe for you to consume. I'm sorry, but animals, I love them, but we are supposed to eat them. You gain knowledge from animals, and you gain knowledge from death, and you eat death whether you think you are or not because all plants are living, and all things that you made in a lab become living organisms, so once you eat them, you kill them. So you are eating death whether you're a vegan or not. Because everything is living. So they say, oh, I don't want to eat death. Well, you are, okay? So I have a real issue with a lot of these celebs, and the reality is a lot of them, not T.J. Lavin, as I don't believe they are, but like Miley Cyrus is another component for veganism, and I believe she's bulimic. So what they do, same with Ariana Grande, they say, T.J. Lavin and his wife, I don't believe are bulimic, so don't go down that road, but Miley Cyrus, Ariana Grande, um, uh, uh, Those two both say a couple... I don't remember who else said they were vegan recently, um, but I was thinking of... I was trying to remember, but they say, oh, I'm vegan, when they're really just bulimic. They also might be vegan, but they're bulimic vegans because vegan is a high-sugar diet, so it's very easy to become bulimic when you're on a vegan diet because you'll find out real quick that you gain weight on a vegan diet. And then people panic, and they start throwing up. Maybe it's occasionally. Maybe it's just once a week when they overeat. Maybe it's once a year. Maybe it's when they drink, and they excuse it as, oh, the alcohol is what made me throw up. But it was really because you pigged out on the nachos when you were drunk, and now you freak out, and you blame it on the alcohol for making you throw up. But really, you made yourself throw up because you pigged out. All these things are still bulimia even if it's just once in a while. And let's say you don't do bulimia, but you're just getting bigger and bigger, and you're getting larger and larger. It's still the same health concerns. We're talking about the too much sugar. It's going to cause a lot of issues for you guys. And we're seeing that. We're seeing more obesity than ever, more health problems, more disease, more disorders. Those are all due to sugar and caffeine. No one wants to admit it because those are two things that we're most addicted to. And the two... 
sugar is the strongest drug in the entire universe for humans. Um, probably for other creatures too, but definitely for humans because we need it for survival, but in large doses and even and large doses is a smaller dose than you all think. Large dose is over 30 grams a day. Over 30 grams a day is a large dose, and that becomes lethal. What happens is anytime you have excess sugar, your body starts using it for other things in the sense of feeding diseases, feeding cancer, feeding candida, um, storing fat. But the biggest thing is it feeds diseases. The excess sugar feeds all of your uh any of the things you have living in you. And the biggest thing would be the fungus. And the fungus is where you're going to see all kinds of issues. That's candida. Read about it online. I could talk for hours about candida, but you got to read about it yourself because it's so... you got to see if um, those are the symptoms you're having because there's lists and lists of symptoms. And I was having, like, all of them when I finally realized that, oh, geez. What it is is we all have fungus on the inside of us. But due to all of these... Um, Primarily the GMOs and the um, the uh, all all the uh, packaged foods and the sugars and the um, the caffeine and the antibiotics and all the, and the hormones and stuff are causing uh, uh, overgrowth of your candida, which live inside. They should be living and functioning fine on the inside, but when they start getting more, because they love sugar, so when you start giving them more sugar, they grow. They get more. They multiply. They go, oh, like sure. Let's uh, let's uh, however reproduce or whatever, you know, what they do. So then you get more and more and more, and that causes issues. It causes bloating, causes tiredness, causing low sex drive, headaches, nausea, um, extreme exhaustion, extreme, 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 where you're just so tired, extreme salt and sugar cravings. All these things, um, just the list goes on and on and on. Go look up oh, skin, uh, rashes and things. A lot of these things are all connected. Um, um, acne and things are connected with candida overgrowth. When you get that cleared out of your system, you'll never get them fully cleared, but when you get them at bay where it's not overgrowth anymore, where it's the regular amount, then you'll notice a lot of things alleviate. I used to get headaches like crazy. I don't get headaches at all. I used to have really bad skin. My skin cleared up. Uh, I used to get, you know, zits and stuff. I bit. I have a little bit right now. Every once in a while, I'll get a little bit, but barely, barely. You know, because I don't wear any kind of um, foundation or anything on my face. So every once in a while, I'll get a little flare-up. And I think I got a little flare-up, honestly, because we had to have chicken recently. And I do not like chicken. Um, I don't like chicken because they feed the chickens corn. And corn has been so genetically modified that there's no... Uh, um, organic corn seed anymore and also corn it has no nutritional value corn is like the worst thing you can consume there's no nutritional value to it it's just it's not a, it's not a uh the people think it's like a good vegetable it's a waste of time consuming corn on any level so they feed that to the chickens that's what they primarily feed them and then now you're eating the chicken so you're getting all that corn as well and I don't like corn so um, I like the cows because they feed them grass that's why I choose beef if people are wondering why I choose beef if they fed the chickens grass then I would eat chicken but since they give them all that corn I don't like it and I found that it caused me all kind of issues um, that but I have extreme because I've you know tried everything for you guys Chicken might be okay for you, you know. I had a Man, lot of issues. Chicken was pretty tough to eat, though, wasn't Man, it? Man, it was just slimy and icky. Oh, I'm telling you, beef is where it's at. But um, so the celebs are saying that they're vegan, but most of them are actually just bulimic. And so it's not fair because then they're telling the younger generation, oh, you can look like this and be vegan for the ones that are still in shape. And that's not true. And then the younger people go, how come I can't look like Miley Cyrus or something? And she's saying she's vegan, and I'm just getting fat being vegan. And she's not. Well, she actually is getting fatter, but um, some of them were staying thin for a while, you know. And it does catch up with you. It does eventually catch up with you. Uh, it, bulimics will eventually start to gain weight, even if they stay bulimic. Um, 
Because unless they're the bulimic that barely eats. <laughs> but, I mean, if you're eating, eventually your body will figure out how to get a lot of calories and just to hold on to everything so it don't matter if you throw it what will happen is second you eat it it'll start being like oh you're gonna throw this up so I'm gonna grab this stuff really fast and just start storing all the stuff as fat and then you go to throw up no matter you already stored it as fat even before you can get it thrown up because your body starts to work up faster than you because it knows what you're gonna do and that's why people get more and more frustrated oh I can't I was thinner I was thinner last year and why isn't it working anymore and they do more and more it just stops working. But, um, so, I wasn't even going to talk about bulimia, and then I started talking about this, but I get really mad because there's a lot of vegans that are really nasty to people that eat meat. And eating meat is what you need to do. Also, and it's, a, it's another thing, too. It's another example. Okay. The reason why we're very, very aware, like, all the celebrities, all the news is saying, hey, this virus is unhealthy for you. Do what we do and stay home. Right. It's the same people who are also bulimic. Right. And you knew this, that they were lying about their diet. They are saying, oh, we're vegans when they're... Ve-. So you knew that that they were spreading misinformation to right. get you to eat more grains. Right. That's it's what's like sold in the Midwest. Most of the celebs lie about their diets. That's why, like, um, it's really hard to know what... Uh, most of them are doing when you read because the, they lie like if you read if you ever read the nonsense that they say they eat I'm like you're right uh, and then you see them like doing exactly the opposite with it well, if once they have a frappuccino in hand throw anything out the window of what they said for healthiness if any celeb is drinking a frappuccino and they are someone like a, uh, trying to be small then they're throwing up if you're drinking uh, frappuccinos Are you kidding me? When I see, like, Ariana Grande drinking Frappuccinos. So Ariana Grande is one of the most bulimic. And she's actually canceling shows now, like, a a couple years back she was because she, her health. And people say, oh, no, it's because of bulimia. Um, She was having, she had canceled her New Year's Eve show here in Vegas, which was huge. And then um, she canceled another show. And then they had to pay her. $8 Eight million to even show up for Coachella because she don't want to show up because she does not like her body right now. And if you guys, those people don't notice that she put on weight because she likes to hide it. What she does, she wears these huge boots, these huge dr- skirts. Like you say, oh no, it's a short skirt. No, the skirt is like pops, <coughs> excuse me, pops out so much and goes down to her boots, so you can't see anything. You're seeing like this much of her leg. Um, and she it makes you think it's a small skirt, but no, it's poofing out, so you can't see any of her body. And then she wears like a little top, which anyone is small if you put your uh, skirt up to here. The top of you is always small. Like when you see someone's waist, it's the, right here. Especially with bulimia, they store all the weight right here. So they're covering that with this big bell skirt. And then they're showing you right here. And then you're thinking, oh, they're still so small. No, they're covering all their fat because they're it's starting to. They're starting. To, what you get really bad with. Um, okay, that's the other way to. You can tell when someone has an eating disorder is they get a real big pooch on their belly, because what happens is, uh, your body starts to store fat in spots you don't want. So you either get on your belly, maybe on your thighs, you get these poochy spots, maybe on your underarms, but uh, these spots that you just can't get rid of the fat. You might have that too, and you might not be bulimic, and it's probably from your diet isn't working because you're eating too much sugar. As if you're getting those pockets where you have that 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 donut on your tummy, the the the, the little the saggies under your arm, um, the th- uh, your thunder thighs, and the you know the what do you call it cellulite on your legs or whatever. All that that's too high a sugar diet. Sugar is what does all that. You cut out your sugar and you'll get rid of all that junk. You'll be like, whoa, I didn't know I could have a flat stomach. It's amazing. I didn't know. I never had a flat stomach my entire life. Like, I always had a pooch because I was always kind of doing eating disorders. I didn't think I'd ever be able to have a flat stomach. And now when I eat organics, I say I don't even do crunches or anything. If I did crunches, I could have, like, a rip stomach. But I don't even bother because, like, mm, whatever. Like, it, I'm, I'm pretty happy with my body just the way it is with just organics with very light exercise. But if I wanted to rip out, it would take, like, two seconds because... Because when you're eating well, uh, your body's just so in tune that when you exercise, 
only takes a couple of minutes and, and you're toned. It's pretty cool. And everyone can be like this. They think, oh no, you're just, it's just your genetics or whatever. Mm -mm. No, we're, we have this misconception that it's our genetics. Your genetics do make your body type in the sense of your shape. But this whole, I'm just fat, I was born that way. Yes, you may have been born fat because your parents may have chose bad decisions while they were, your mom while she was pregnant with you and then well, as soon as you were born gave you bad food. So yes, you were probably fat since birth and including you were a fat baby maybe when you were born. But it doesn't mean you can't be thin. It's we have really bad food options and we've had really bad food options since the 80s. They thought that they would make the food better, uh, they'd make it more convenient and more uh, inexpensive and stuff because and they were having a shortage you know they were having a shortage of real food in the 70s and then they thought well let's do all of this fake food let's make it more convenient let's do microwave options so women can go back to work and stuff or go to work for the first times you know in some in some of these times and um then now we're how many years later and we're starting to see more health problems, more obesity, more eating disorders. Bulimia was unheard of, you know, for many. I mean, we had it in the Caesar's days. They speak of that where people would overconsume. They had these vomitoriums. But then you didn't hear about it for many, many years, like when, uh, you know, people were settling in to places. I really doubt they were throwing up when they were, you know, trying to farm and they had very little. So it wasn't until people have had this excess now that bulimia occurred again. And same as in the Caesar times, they had excess. Now we have excess. So now it's interesting because whether you're bulimic or obese, you have to put those in the same category. Um, or if you're just a weight you don't want to be, if you're overweight, Put yourself in the same category what I'm saying because what's happening is as a society we've become very greedy and we think that we should finish our entire plate. We think that it's we should not waste food. That it's better to put it in our body than to put it in the trash. Now, of course we don't want to waste food. Generally, okay, good rule of thumb, let's not waste food, right? Let's not cook more than we need. Let's not waste it. But, let's not ever, 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 ever make ourselves a human trash can and say, you know, I'm, I'm really full, but I'm going to stuff it inside myself instead of throw it out. That is a terrible idea. Absolutely terrible idea. Throw it out and, and save yourself some pounds. I don't understand this concept of finish your whole plate. That was when we didn't have enough food. We don't have that problem anymore. No one needs to be told to finish their plate. I don't think any kids, uh, uh, we have that issue, except for if they're not finishing their healthy stuff. But I mean, uh, for the majority, no one is having an issue of finishing their plate anymore. What we need to do is, is cut back on the amount we're stuffing on our plates, to be honest. People don't like organics. They go, oh, it's smaller. Oh, geez, why am I paying more for smaller? You're paying more because... It is actual food. It is real food. It is so nutritious that that little bit of whatever you're eating will give you so much more nutrition than that huge conventional crap. So let's say it be an apple. Oh, this organic, oh, this little organic apple and this huge conventional apple. This huge conventional apple will give you no satisfaction. Instead, you'll want another one, another one, another one. This tiny little organic apple you'll feel very satisfied on. Apple is a bad example, though, because it has a lot of sugar, so you might still want another apple. <laughs> but if you're doing something like a meat option, I don't eat apples personally. I think that's too much sugar. I don't, I don't eat fruit. I only do veggies. I think fruit is too high in sugar, personally. See, people think fruit's so good for you, but fruit is very high in sugar. What you want to think of fruit is if you were in the wild, you would want to think of how much access you would have to fruit to where you live, and that's how much fruit you should eat. So let's say... If you live somewhere, and let's say you had berries and some trees where you could get some... Uh, Satan loves you, Jared. Thank you. So when we sneeze, we say Satan loves you. Um, you want to think the access you would have to that fruit, and that should be the amount of fruit you should eat. So think of seasons, what would be in season, um, and, and you'd have to wait for it to ripen. Um, 
so you could only have a little bit. Now we have so much fruit and we pop it in smoothies, which are terrible. Throw smoothies and protein shakes out the window as fast as you can. It's the worst thing you could be consuming. Absolute worst thing. I mean, if unless you just want straight sugar into your bloodstream and then all sort of fat. That's what you're doing when you're doing those beverages. They're going right in your bloodstream. You're not using any energy to uh, break down anything because they're just liquid. And then everything that you're not using immediately, stored as fat. So beverages, we only drink water. Water and sparkling water. That's so I got my... I had my Italian water earlier. Oh, it's on the table over there. But um, people think that, like, oh, this can't work for me. I, I just am beyond help, or I've tried every diet. I have, too. I'm telling you guys. All you got to do is eat food from nature. And what I mean from nature is the food that originally was from nature. I don't mean what they've now considered natural or from nature. Um, no, I mean before they started messing with the food, before the pesticides, before the hormones, before the steroids, before the GMOs, the genetically modified organisms, before all these additives and sugars and seasonings and flavors and artificial flavorings and artificial this and artificial that, before all that, the food that would be grown from earth, the animals that would be on earth grazing, the ones that we would have hunted for. The berries that you would have picked. The handful. Not bowls of... Jedi Rich used to make... Jedi Rich used to make smoothies out of, like, entire containers of fruit. We had those... The Nutribullet. He would put, like, the whole thing of blueberries almost sometimes, or blackberries. You're like... Blend it up wonder why we gained weight during that diet man that is so much sugar you'd be better off having an ice cream shake some of the ice cream shakes have less sugar and less calories and less everything than these smoothies than these fruit smoothies people think oh i'll choose the smoothie rather than ice cream well if only it tastes like ice cream if anything tastes that sweet it's sugar even if it's artificial, your brain is still going to think it's sugar. So that's why it doesn't work. It's still going to produce insulin. So anything artificial, ooh, it's so sweet, but no calories. I don't know how I can have a super sweet taste like ice cream or mm, this protein bar that tastes exactly like cookie dough, but it says it's good for me. Mm -mm. Those protein bars, oh my gosh, we used to go for that. Weight went up and up and up, and we're like, no. We're not going to let them go. And I started to get really sick, actually, off of those things. Those I noticed, we were eating that. We did, like, the balance bars, and we did, um, they came up with some new ones that were, like, gluten-free. Because we were doing the gluten-free, and we thought we could do the gluten-free bars. And they even had organic ones. We were doing all these. Mm -mm. You're going to have so many issues. I started to actually get these insane, actually, that was the one time I had a headache during this time. So ever since I started smoking weed, and so you know, again, I said, all right, but I, when I was doing those protein bars, I started getting these insane headaches. And I was like, weird. And I noticed I only got them when I ate the bars. And I was like, whoa, there's a lot of, if you don't know what the, if you can't, if you have to look up the definition of the words in your ingredients of something you're eating, you shouldn't eat it. If you don't know what the words mean, do not eat it. It's as simple as that. Your ingredients should be things that you know. It should say, on my beef, it says organic beef as the ingredient. That is the ingredient. The only ingredient says organic beef. On our water, it says water and carbonated... It says or carbonated water and minerals or something. It shows the minerals. There should be no uh, flavorings or anything like that. If you see any of that, you're going to have issues. What you want to eat is real food, food that came from the earth. What we eat is organic beef, organic collard greens, organic kale, organic garlic. That's it. And water. Um, and so what we do is we make uh, stews, beef stews, beef bones stew, um, hamburgers, and steak. That's what we eat.
Breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Some combination of beef. Usually burgers. Usually many burgers. I make this many burgers. Oh, for every meal. It's the most delicious, delicious thing. I crave it every meal. We eat the same thing every meal, and I still crave it every single meal. It's so satisfying. There's nothing more satisfying when I eat anything else. I'm like, mm, can I have my beef? It's the most satisfying thing. You you won't believe it. Start eating beef, and you'll find that you'll start cutting out more and more of the other things. And you might have to, you know, actually make yourself because sugar, your brain is always going to want more and more sugar. But you'll find the more you eat the beef, you'll feel more satisfied. Then you'll be craving your sugar less and less. Most people are eating so much sugar for one thing because they're not getting their nutrition. They're not getting the proper protein. So they just go into sugar, and then they're just going to go more sugar, more sugar, more sugar. But if you're actually getting protein, you'll feel satisfied for the first time. And then you'll be like, oh, I'm not craving so much sugar. But be careful, because once you're eating sugar, you're still going to crave sugar, because it does turn off the sensor in the brain. But if you eat a whole meal of beef and avoid the sugar, you'll feel real satisfied. But then if you go... Try to grab for your snacks. So you start those snacks. You're going to start the whole process again and not feeling satisfied. You know what I'm saying? Because you turn off the sensor in your brain. Say you're full. Okay, guys. Uh, let me see. I was going to talk uh, a little bit about this virus. And then I'm going to jump off here because I've been talking all about the food here. I'm going to jump in the bath. Is that okay? Oh, yeah. But that's what I was going to do. But I thought you were going to do your blog. Are you done? Well, yeah, because I was about to get off here. and then. Oh, man, I'm just jumping in the shower. Man, you just got the last one. I know, I try squeezing when you're when you're busy. All right, you can take it. But, but remember, Are I... Are you done like, with your bath? Yeah, because I was going to take a bath. Okay. You did the last bath. Remember, okay, I didn't okay. even get a bath you're yesterday. You go take a bath, and you go. Here's what happened, you guys. Yesterday, this is what happens. This is why we, all, you know, we only have one bathroom. But Jedi Rich takes like a two-hour bath. So if I, like right now, if he gets in the bath, I have to wait two hours before I can get in the bath. That's why I say no. So I say, let me go first. I only take about a half hour at most. And that, yeah, no joke. The guy sits in the bathroom and he'd been there for three hours before. I'm not kidding. He takes his phone in there. He does blogs in there. He, he does uh, just tweets in there. He eats in there. I bring him food in there. Sits in the bath there for like two or three hours. So, I got to get in there before him. Otherwise, I will not get a bath for three hours from now. And I need, I want a bath because I missed my bath yesterday. I showered. But we like taking baths. Uh, because once we, when we lived in the cave, uh, we didn't get to shower or bathe sometimes for like a week. So, as soon as we got a place, we were all about the bath. And we... we enjoy our baths. That's why Jerry Rich sits in there for so long because when we lived in the cave, sometimes we went a week. One time we went a week and a half without bathing uh, of any level. We grew, That was when we were sick. We were stuck up there because we would go to like either the rest stops, uh, the uh, not the rest stops, the uh, truck stops, um, and you can pay for the shower or we'd go to the city pool or we'd uh, get a hotel room for a night. So it doesn't matter, you guys, we'd just go stay at the Wild West to shower once in a while because we get so stinky um, and icky up there. Uh, and, you know, you just get gross. But, so now we really appreciate our baths. But yesterday we went to the Raiders Stadium, so I didn't have time, so I took a shower. So I already feel gypped. Oh, I didn't get my bath yesterday because you really get used to enjoying those baths. And now he's trying to take my bath time. So I got to get off of here. Otherwise, you're just going hoard the bath for the next three hours so that is what's funny around here but you guys seriously if you have time now since you're home from work take a bath and just sit there and then rinse off afterwards if you say oh it's gross you say no you rinse off afterwards you take your bath you sit and you get who cares if you're sitting in the ickiness because at the very end, you rinse off. But it's actually really good for your hair uh, because you allow yourself to let the water soak in there. And you usually allow your shampoo or conditioner to sit longer if you're in the bath like we do. We, we leave in like a leave-in kind of conditioner. Let it sit for like two minutes. Um, then you everything gets more uh, hydrated. And, you know, we're made up of 80% water. So it's good to just soak yourself in and uh, submerge yourself in the water. So do that if you have the time. And if you have a small bath, who cares? Jedi Rich is six foot two. He gets himself in our tiny little bath. Barely. Barely. He barely fits. And I had to put a towel because the water starts coming out half the time. 
<laughs> Once he starts moving, <laughs> it's like, I'm like, yeah, watch it. Tidal wave coming out of there. Because it's a small bath. But it, it, we're not talking jacuzzi bath. We're talking a little bath. Just get yourself in there. Feels good. Soak yourself. If you don't fit all, you got to do it like part. You know, you can put your legs up on the wall like this. Get your head in. If you're too long, that's what we have to do. You can't fit in there, you know. But it works. It's good exercise, good stretch. Stretch in there, put your legs up, stretch. Dunk your head with your legs in the air. It's great. Um, especially if you have the time right now. It's also a really good stress reliever if you're pissed off, if you're irritated with your family. Say, I'm going to take a bath, put on some music, put on... Um, I have a little jam speaker I bring in the, that, you know, and then little Bluetooth. If you got one of those, put it on, get yourself some Epsom salt. All that stuff's cheap. Epsom salt is $7 for a huge bag. We get that. It's not that flowery stuff. You can get that, too. That's more expensive. You know, if you get bath salts and bath soaks. We tried that CBD thing. That was great. I, but uh, I haven't been back at Sprouts, but they had this great little CBD thing. That was like $5. That was a little treat. That has been nice. But normally we just do $7 bag of Epsom salt. Pour that in your bath. It's really nice. So I'm going to do that um, right now because i got to beat Jar Rich. So like, See, and we've gotten in fights over this, too, because he goes, you get to go first. I'm like, that's because I take half hour bass at a most, at most. Uh, half hour, I'm good at most. He, I'm not kidding. The guy sits in there for so long. You guys, we'll, we'll time him today. He'll probably be faster than that now. But, yeah, yesterday we went to the stadium at about, like, I want to say it was, like, 3 a.m. Because we wanted to get out there um, while they had the lights. They lit up the stadium. So check it out on our website, jirich.com. Stadium updates. We got all this cool footage. We just did a brand-new Raiders video. It's awesome. We're doing a bunch of theme songs. We have the Raider, Vegas Raiders theme song. Uh, we're doing Fight for Your Right to Party with the new updated Steve Sisolak lyrics. And then um, our other one is we care a lot. Those are all on jairich.com. There's a brand new, go check out the new Raiders video. Jairich just posted it today on Jairich, creative producer on YouTube, but also on jairich.com stadium updates. I think it's Allegiant, Allegiant Stadium Updates. I think he changed it to the name. Um, I know our, our website is huge. We have like so many, so many tabs. Um,